What makes London so captivating is that layered effect. You're walking the same streets that Shakespeare did, then bam, a modern masterpiece like the Shard pierces the skyline. It's this dialogue between past and present that makes it so special. Okay, let's unpack this historical treasure chest, shall we? And we're not just ticking off boxes, oh no. We're uncovering the hidden stories, the unexpected perspectives that bring these landmarks to life. First up, Big Ben, or should we say Elizabeth Tower? See, even the name's got a story. It's easy to get tripped up, right? For so long, the name Big Ben referred to the whole tower. But technically, it's the nickname for the Great Bell inside. The renaming to Elizabeth Tower in 2012, well, that's a nod to how London honors its monarchs, even as it evolves. It's a reminder that London's not afraid to embrace change, even while holding on to its traditions. And those chimes, it's like the city's heartbeat marking time. Speaking of time and grandeur, let's scoot over to the Palace of Westminster. Now, we've all seen photos of that ornate Gothic facade, right? But have you ever stopped to think about what's happening inside those walls? Imagine standing there, seeing the sun glint off that intricate stonework, and knowing that inside, behind those walls, major political dramas have unfolded for centuries. Think about the debates, the decisions, the history made within those walls. It's a powerful reminder that London isn't just about pretty buildings. It's a living, breathing center of global influence. Talk about a contrast. From the grandeur of the palace, let's slip into something a little more intimate. St. Stephen's Chapel. Tucked away within the palace, it's like stepping back in time. Once a royal chapel, now a place where politicians debate. High vaulted ceilings, stained glass windows, whispering tales of saints and kings. It's got that medieval charm you just can't fake. And, you know, it's fascinating to think about how this small, intimate space has played such a significant role in shaping the course of British history. Okay, time for a change of pace. Let's ditch the cobblestones for a bit and stroll along the River Thames. But this isn't just a pretty backdrop, folks. Think of the Thames almost as a character in London's story. It's witnessed Roman settlements, medieval plagues, Shakespearean plays, the Blitz, all reflected in its waters. It's a constant presence, a living thread that connects London's past, present, and future. And talk about a tale of two views. On one hand, you've got the London Eye, that massive Ferris wheel giving you a bird's eye view of the city's evolution. You can see how London has grown and changed over time. And on the other bank, there's Tower Bridge, a piece of history itself. Those iconic towers, the raising bascules. It's both a functional bridge and an emblem of London's engineering prowess. And it's not just about the structure itself, but also the stories it holds. And speaking of icons, how could we forget the Tower of London? This is where things get juicy, folks. We're talking royal prisoners, beheadings, intrigue, but there's another side to the tower. Don't forget the crown jewels. Yeah. It's that juxtaposition, right? Opulence, dazzling jewels, housed in a place that saw so much darkness. That's the Tower of London in a nutshell. It's a place where history's playing a game of gotcha with your senses. From the tower's ancient stones, let's fast forward a few centuries, shall we? Boom, the shard <sighs> pierces the sky, all sleek glass and modern ambition. What's fascinating here is the statement it makes. It's like London saying, yeah, we've got centuries of history, but we're not afraid to embrace the future, to push boundaries. It's a testament to London's forward-thinking spirit. But amidst all this modernity, London remembers its roots. Case in point, St. Paul's Cathedral, Wren's masterpiece. That dome is iconic. But the real magic happens inside. Have you ever heard someone whisper in St. Paul's Cathedral? You're thinking of the Whispering Gallery, right? Yeah. It's incredible. You can whisper on one side of the dome and someone across from you can hear you as if you were standing right next to them. It's all about the acoustics and the shape of the dome. It's wild. It feels almost like magic. Speaking of contrast, from the grandeur of St. Paul's, let's head to the Tate Modern, this former power station turned art mecca. Now that's a transformation. The Tate Modern is a testament to London's ability to adapt to transform. It's taken something industrial and made it breathtaking. You go from marveling at turbine halls to standing in front of a Rothko, all under one roof. Talk about a city that can do it all. But let's not forget about the bridge that literally connects those two worlds, the Millennium Bridge. Ah, uh, yes. It's not every day you get to walk over a river while being surrounded by such architectural splendor. On one side, you have the classic dome of St. Paul's, and on the other, the imposing brick structure of the Tate Modern. This is a pretty good walk across the Thames, if you ask me. And speaking of walking, let's take a stroll through one of London's most vibrant areas, Covent Garden. This is one of my favorite spots in London. It's always buzzing with energy. 
You've got street performers showcasing incredible talents, high-end boutiques tempting you with their wares, and the historic Royal Opera House, reminding you of the area's strong connection to the arts. It's like stepping into a whirlwind of creativity and culture. But for a complete change of pace, let's escape the hustle and bustle and find some tranquility in Hyde Park. Imagine this. You're surrounded by sprawling green spaces, a serene lake reflecting the sky, a moment of peace amidst the urban jungle. And tucked away in this oasis, you'll find the Princess Diana Memorial Fountain. It's a beautiful tribute and a reminder that even in a city as grand as London, personal stories touch every corner. It's incredible how London can offer both the energy of Covent Garden and the tranquility of Hyde Park. But let's talk about energy for a second specifically, the electric energy of Piccadilly Circus. If Borough Market is London's beating heart, Piccadilly Circus is like its pulsing neon vein. Those massive illuminated billboards, the constant flow of people, that iconic fountain. It's sensory overload in the best way possible. You really do feel the pulse of the city there. But for a different kind of grandeur, let's head over to Kensington Palace. This isn't just any palace. It's the home of William and Kate. It's a place where history intersects with modern day royalty. Walking through those rooms, you can practically feel the presence of past monarchs. And don't forget the gardens. They're a peaceful oasis in the middle of the city. From the intimate charm of Kensington Palace, let's head to a place that practically screams London, Trafalgar Square, Nelson's Column towering above, the National Gallery with its Van Goghs and Da Vinci's. And we can't forget about the fourth plinth. This once empty pedestal is now home to a rotating display of contemporary sculptures. It's a fantastic way to showcase cutting-edge art in a space so rich with history. I love how London can seamlessly blend the old and the new like that. <laughs> and speaking of iconic landmarks, we saved the grandest for last. Buckingham Palace, the home of royalty, steeped in tradition. And did I hear someone say, changing of the guard? Buckingham Palace is more than just a building. It's a symbol. Seeing the changing of the guard with all that pomp and ceremony, it connects you to a lineage that stretches back centuries. It's an experience that makes you feel like you've stepped back in time. But as we all know, London doesn't stop when the sun goes down, ready to explore the city after dark. Now that the sun has set, are you ready to see London transform right before our eyes? London truly comes alive after dark. It's like the city puts on a velvet cloak and whispers, now let me tell you some stories you won't forget. Our first stop on this moonlit adventure is Leicester Square. Imagine you're strolling past grand theaters, the air practically buzzing with anticipation. The buildings themselves seem to hold their breath. And suddenly, flash bulbs, movie stars, red carpets, the roar of the crowds. It's electric Leicester Square is where London rolls out the red carpet, hosting glamorous movie premieres that make you feel like you're part of the glitz and glamour. You can practically taste the champagne and dreams, can't you? But let's hop over to a spot where the vibe is a little less polished and a little more raw Soho. What secrets does this legendary neighborhood whisper after midnight? Soho is where London's rebellious spirit truly shines. You might stumble upon a hidden jazz club, catch a glimpse of an up-and-coming band rocking out in a dimly lit pub, 